All right, good afternoon and welcome to the kickoff for the 2022 Nardini series. We're out here at Nardini Manor in Buckeye, Arizona. And this is the first of three fixed time foot races to take place. It is June 4th today. So this one is gonna be just a night run. We're gonna be doing six and 12 hours tonight, kicking things off at 7 p.m. right around sunset. Nardini Manor is this really cool countryside mansion. It was built over a hundred years ago. It is in fact the first place that I have ever run an ultra marathon way back in 2005. And we are on a 500 meter gravel course. This is a, a USATF certified route. People are going to be seeing how long they can run in either six hours or 12 hours. And just like it was my first ultra marathon, it is quite possibly one of the best places to start running an ultra marathon, see how they're getting ready. We are just about an hour from the start and I would love to see what people are thinking as uh, we kick off this, this first race in the series. The other two races in the series coming up later this year, we've got the Hotfoot Hamster, September 3rd, and then the Fat Ox, which will have a 48 hour. That will be in December. Uh, the hot foot hamster has a 24 hour. So that one is definitely gonna be more challenging for the heat, um, but we are kicking things off just with the six and 12 hour here at the Jackrabbit Jubilee. And uh, we are gonna go talk to some of our runners. First time out here for me at Nardini Manor. It is a nice sunny hot day, 500 meter dirt track. We have a sold out field uh, for the six and 12 hour. It is going to get a little cooler, but the most important thing is starting slow and staying hydrated, right? Because as soon as hydration goes, everything tends to go. It's a long event, so just starting slower than you think you need to start would be good advice for almost any event. It's a lot more challenging, I think, than it looks. I think people will come in with it and they're like, oh, well, there's no, no gain, no hill really, but it's really easy to get yourself burnt out. Um, the course isn't like perfectly oval either. There's a lot of kind of cutting around. I think that wears out the faster runners quicker on this one. Last year I did 31 miles. Today, tonight I want to do at least one more mile than that. I'm hoping to get 40 miles in. Because you pass the, the, the aid station every third of a mile so you can get, you can get your water refilled. You drop off your water, get it refilled. And uh, it just makes it more fun. It's just a fun event. Like we, uh, I've been, this is the third time I've done it. And uh, it's just fun. Just a fun event to, to be on. Thank you so much. I got my my packet here. So I am in the 12 hour as well as directing the event. So I'm hoping to get some miles in maybe when it quiets down. I did, probably didn't get any swag, huh? Dang it. No. Well, it is shorts, right? Let's, well, I want to take a look at it at least. Oh, these are the men's. Okay, so this is, fu this is funny. We got shorts for everyone for this race. So we got the Jackrabbit Jubilee shorts with the disco ball. Pretty awesome. Ready, go! 
All right, good evening. We're one hour in, and it looks like they are serving up some smoothies. We're gonna go check and make sure that's what's going on over here. All right, what are we serving up over here? We have fruit smoothies. So bananas, strawberries, some tropical fruits, orange juice, bananas. Seems like something great when it's still warm out and you're an hour in on running. All right, we are here on the northeast corner of the track. All these folks here, about 20 cars, all have direct track access, which can be pretty convenient. I don't want to just spy into people's stuff, but you can see uh, there are people that are working out of the trunks of their car right over here. And then we'll walk down this way. And also some folks just have tables set up, so it makes it really easy to grab all your nutrition, have everything you need trackside right here. Looks like this person has a bunch of spring energy. We're just spying on their goods over here. Um, and this looks like, this looks like some sort of like a light wand. I'm not really sure. We're just taking some guesses. But yeah, lots of car hatches open along this row. So we'll take a quick walk down here and see what else we can find. Um, so from the looks of it, there's not a lot of crew folks out here. So most folks seem to be self crewing, but they have their chairs and their tables and everything set up. All right, so yeah, we've kind of got to the end of the cars over here. And it looks like, like I said before, most folks are self-crewing. That's kind of the word over here on the east side of the track. All right, we just hit 10 o'clock. It is our first turnaround of the night. So we got people going back the other way now. Turnaround time, woo, let's go, let's go. Does that look like bunny ears? Yes, let's do it. Turnaround time, let's go. We're getting ready for the odd things every odd hour, 11 p.m. edition. It's 1041 right now. We got these uh, Glow wearables pack, eight sets in each. So you got a set of bunny ears, you got a set of glasses. We gotta get all these made up so we can hand these out at the 11 o'clock hour. I don't know if that's odd enough, but it is what it is, so we're doing it. All right, we got the glow sticks in here. We gotta get into this. Oh yeah. Oh, interesting, they're like randomized colors. The other pack was like blues and greens. This one's a lot of pinks. Enzo has the method of, you gotta like pinch it. Oh yeah. That looks much more like a bunny ear than than not. Now we're just, we better hurry. We only got 14 minutes. All right, I need to recruit everyone, anyone who wants to help. All right, you know. Thank you. Some will be mix and match. Cool. me, I like All right. Okay, so we have bracelets to put on the runners. So whoever wants to come help, as people loop through, whoever wants bracelets can get them. We are going to have a second start for the six hour that's going to start at 1 a.m. in 15 minutes when the other one ends. So it'll be a little chaotic there for a bit. Got to shout out some of our folks on the live stream. We, we decided to do a last minute live stream tonight. We've got 
you know, between 15 and 30 viewers throughout. Um, it's been pretty quiet, but I got a shout out Sea Town fan. I got a shout out BDS Tuber, Davis Best. I think they've all done some some super chat donations tonight. And Jem Rooney just hopped in. That's legit. We're gonna have to say hi to him here in a second. But uh, that's our update right now. And we're gonna have some more antics later. What's happening? Oh my gosh, there's like an owl. Let's get that thing. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you all for being out here at Jackrabbit Jubilee. Let's finish this strong six hour runners. Let's go. One, let's go. is 4:30, and we can see a bit of blue in the sky so there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, we had a 4 a.m. turnaround so that was the only turnaround in the second six hour and people are still doing great uh, I just got myself some coffee from the aid station I mixed some uh, vegan is it protein recovery from gnarly in there so i've got kind of like a, a mocha hot chocolate that's gonna give me a boost all the way to the end here so we've got about oh two and a half hours left in this thing and we've been having a lot of fun with the live stream this has been kind of a fun experiment for us uh I'll show you behind the scenes here we've got our obs switcher we have our actual live youtube and then these are our comments over here. We're interacting with some people. I don't know if you can hear me. We had 192 viewers so far on this second stream with 20, con 20 concurrent at the moment. So people are asking, is there lube at the aid station? Let's go ahead and put that, push that comment live. Click it over here. And it'll pop up over there. I'm gonna go ahead and comment back real quick. It's been a popular snack at this time of the morning. Honestly, watermelon has been the best seller so far. Watermelon and hash browns. <laughs> seven o'clock that is the conclusion of jackrabbit jubilee thank you so much everyone well that was fun um i don't think i ran quite as far as i wanted but i had a really good time and i felt really good the whole time this is a really cool place to run i love running here around the nardini manor this is like the coolest place to suffer this at night is the neatest place i absolutely love the backdrop this is way cooler than a track I mean, it's fun to do stuff like Desert Solstice, but doing races like this is a lot of fun. And even with like all the people like going in between like traffic, it makes it a lot of fun. I really enjoy this, so I'm glad I came. I wanted to run more than 45 miles or at least get close to it. And I think I ended up with like 42 on my watch and about 40 officially, so I wasn't quite there. I have no idea how Nick Corey can run 50 miles here. I, am, I was thinking about that while I was running. Nick ran a good 10 miles more than this, twice I think he did it. I'm really impressed by that, side note. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to run closer to 45, but that's okay. Um, I guess it was enough to win. I got a really cool um, print to, to frame. Thank you for that, by the way. 
So. Um, what would you tell someone who's never done a fixed time and they, they're like, not sure if this sounds boring. Oh, it's the most fun way to race. It's the most fun way to race because you can stop and start as you please. You know, you don't have to be running fast. You don't have to be running slow. You can walk. You can take a nap in the middle of it if you want. You can run a lap and then just be done or drink a beer. I mean, you can literally take it as you please and it just becomes your race. It's like a blank canvas. So if you want to run hard, you want to run fast, you want to run a million miles, you can. If you only want to run a mile and call it quits, you can. So it's the best way to race in my opinion. And you get to hang out with a bunch of people because you're passing them and being passed a lot when you're on a 400 meter path. So it becomes more like personal and more like social. So you meet a lot of people. I like that. So passing people every, every few seconds and giving them a thumbs up and getting one in return makes it more fun. And also you can hear the music like the whole way around the track. And that makes it, that makes it a lot of fun. I will say also it's, it's very pleasant the whole way. It's unlike a track where it's just like rubber and then a fence and like the school or something. Here we have like a maze of hedges, there's statues, there's like beautiful things to look at the whole way. And you guys time the race perfectly so the sun comes up right in the final hour. So like right when you're really tired, you have this beautiful sunrise to look at. So I really recommend this place for anyone that's looking to do a fixed time race that hasn't done one before. This is probably the best one to do for your first because it's the most fun, it's the most enjoyable. I like it better than across the years also, uh, just for the venue, because I find this the smaller loop to be more fun. Yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, Roger Rublik, I think is the guy's name that created this and, and puts this on for us. Um, yeah, big thank you to him if he sees this. Thank you, Roger. Uh, the, the path is fantastic. So, and you can tell they do a, a, a lot of work to keep it up. You know, the upkeep is, it must be a lot of work. So, yeah, thanks to you, Jim. It's a great race. And Jubilee, I miss you. We all missed you. Uh, Andre Lee and I did the uh, 12 hour here at Nardini Mana for Jack Rabbit Jubilee. Oh, this is what, 2017, sixth time? Yeah, D uh, various distances. We'll and uh, the atmosphere, absolutely love it. It's electric, uh, being out here and, you know, running with all the, uh, the runners doing uh, different uh, distances and, uh, different times, uh, you get rejuvenated every time there's a new start if you're doing longer time. So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And then starting at night and then uh, going into the day, having the sunrise gives you a nice little kick uh, to uh, get you to the finish. You get out here and you start running. If you get out too fast, you know, you could kill your race right there. Uh, but if you have a strategy on how many, uh, how many miles you want to do or, you know, what time uh, you want to do miles in, uh, have that strategy and come out and uh, get it done. I suggest everybody come out and try it at least once. You know, if you don't like it, you can hit back to the trails, but come out and do some uh, fixed time events. Usually start out, I run uh, usually like the first hour um, just to get a feel, get my body used to uh, running flat. Um, and then from there I back off and then, you know, just gauge and see where my body is. And uh, just run some, you know, run or walk uh, some uh, easy laps and then, you know, run when I feel like it and just, you know, keep an eye on where my goal is and try not to have it too solid because things can change, uh, but just be willing to keep moving. Come on, get it done. <laughs> Go get it.